Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today, we will hopefully get outside later, but right now, we're gonna set up a limb-driven rest. And not just any limb-driven rest, the new Primer from Hamski. So the Primer is new for 2021. It is the budget model uh, from Hamski, although it doesn't feel, <laughs> just the weight in the package, uh, doesn't feel anything like a budget style rest from any other company that I've ever had that's a budget style rest. It's definitely a little bit lighter, which is fantastic. Their uh, current models with the Hybrid Hunter and in particular the Trinity with that third bearing and that long arm, uh, it really does have some extra beef to it, uh, but this feels incredibly robust. It just doesn't have all of the really fun bells and whistles like it, uh, this back plate right here that has Hamski. That's recessed usually on the uh, Hybrid Hunter and the Trinity, whereas in this one, it's kind of just more of a rectangular block shape, but it's a lot lighter uh, in that regard because of it. Uh, and of course, because all the metal components on the inside are just a little bit smaller, like I said, a three mil bearing, uh, which is still quite large in comparison to the bushings that get used by most companies. Uh, this is just a really robust, well-built rest. And I'm very excited to be putting it on the bow. <laughs> also, Hamski has done uh, away with the spring system that usually goes onto the body of the rest. They've gone with this rebound dampener, which is really just kind of like a really firm rubber. It is flexible, uh, but uh, that's actually gonna go down to the bottom portion of the limb. And I'll show you how I set all that up and whether or not your uh, uh, limb driven rest like a vapor trail or whatever model you might have has something like this. Uh, all the things that I'm going to do today are perfectly uh, applicable and can easily cross over to any limb driven style rest that you're going to shoot on the market. So first things first here, I pulled everything out of the package. And so I have the uh, the arm assembly, uh, the extra nuts, bolts. I have the, uh, the arrow holder here that could go onto the shelf of the bow. Uh, as this is a limb driven rest, it stays down flat when the bow is at brace. And as you draw on the limb curls up in, or down in, depending if you have the top or bottom connection, the fork will lift up, grab the arrow, and then as the limbs go away, when you shoot, the fork will drop again. This, at this point, is when I will go in ahead and attach the limb pad. As you see here, I already have it on my cure because I've set this bow up last year with one of my older ham skis, uh, and so I already have the limb pad in the position here. The limb pad here, you do not have to use the full-size limb pad. All this is is just to hold the activation cord in place using the ridges. You can cut this down a lot smaller. You can use half it, a third of it, and you can put multiple different uh, chunks of limb pad here on multiple different bows. So if you have multiple different bows that you would run this rest out of, you know, because Hamski of course makes great rest, you can use these for indoor 3D hunting, and that's what I do. So all of my bows have some section of limb pad on them. Now a question I get asked all the time is where should I put this limb pad? And it really is bow specific. So as you see right here, here, I have this about two to two and a half inches maybe down the limb here. Yeah, I'm going to say about two and a half inches, and that's where my cure really liked it. Now, if you leave the full limb pad, you can try to work on the bumps, and you even get that extra half to uh, five-eighths of an inch uh, difference moving it uh, closer to the end of the limb or back towards the limb pocket. Now, the way that a limb driver works is the closer it is out to the tip of the limb, the sooner the fork will pick up and the later it will fully get out of the way. So you're gonna get more arrow to fork contact, not in a bad way, but more arrow to fork contact the closer it is out to the limb tip. The further it is in towards the limb pocket, it's going to pick it up later because the limb of course starts flexing up here towards the uh, internal workings of the bow as you're drawing. So as soon as it starts picking up here at the tip, it would start picking up. But if you put it clear back into here, the later and later it'll pick it up and the sooner it'll drop it away. My Victory 39 back here, I actually have a limb pad stuck three, almost three and a quarter inches inches away from the tip of the limb. It does not like it anywhere closer than three inches, so I don't get it any closer than that. My Energy 35 is a lot closer and it tunes into about an inch and a half from the limb tip. So I see a lot of guys with a lot of different bow manufacturers, they'll stick it all the way out here on the tip of the limb. And that makes it a little bit more critical. Whoop, there goes that. <laughs> that makes it a little bit more critical when it comes to the tune because you're getting the most amount of arrow to fork contact, arrow to launcher arm contact, and it's more like a blade rest right now. It's still a very 
quick, violent reaction, if you will, from the bow going off, but you still get more contact and so it's more particular about your grip. So I've found that the closer I move it in towards the limb pocket, the little bit more forgiving I get, but there is a breaking point when you move it in too far that it doesn't support it long enough and you will get erratic aero flight and you just don't get the right amount, that perfect timing, if you will, of launcher arm to aero contact. Man, I just spent like five minutes talking about limb sticky pad. Imagine when I actually bolt this thing onto the riser, good grief. Nice thing with Hamski is that it gives you multiple mounting positions to go through on the actual arm itself so you don't run out of gang adjustment. So that slot there right here up top is quite large and it'll allow you to gang adjust any of these three holes that you want with the laser engraving. So I'm just gonna start with the middle hole uh, and we'll just work our way around from there. All right, nothing special there. I'm also going to go ahead and remove this football clamp here that keeps this uh, cord, the activation cord taut. I have a video and I will put it down in the description below on how I use a Prusik style knot. Uh, thanks AJ again for that video. AJ from over at Knights of the Apex was the one who got me onto that. I'll link his channel below. Uh, but I don't like football clamps on my rests. So it just gives me a much cleaner feel, metal free feel and gives me adjustment really easily on the fly. Same Allen key that removed the football clamp is the same Allen key that'll take off this little bolt here so we can get this containment cage off and I actually am a real big fan of how they have on the primer here compared to the Trinity and the uh, Hybrid Hunter. The um, primer only has one screw on its little containment cage where the Trinity uh, and the Hybrid Hunter have two and they're right the one is tucked back in like up into itself you can only get to it like a quarter turn at a time it's a righteous pain in the rear end but there we go now it's a little bit on the uh, on the naked side here without that cage on it, but that's exactly what I want. And I actually prefer to shoot my hamskies without the cage. I know it's sacrilegious. Uh, you're supposed to have that cage on there for containment purposes, but this launcher arm is really just, it's nice and large and easily contains. And unless you're tilting the bow way past the 45 degree angle, your arrow's not gonna fall off. I'm a tree stand saddle hunter. Uh, I don't spot and stalk around and move in my bow like this. It goes from tree to hand to drawn. So uh, I like to shoot without the containment cage, it's just kind of personal preference. All right, so I punched in a little bit closer here so that way when we go to install this rest, uh, we can uh, have a much better visual. But first things first, I almost forgot to mention how I actually take care of my rest in terms of the silencing. So Hamski will send, like I mentioned earlier, it's not the overmolded plastic. So they send you like the, uh, the moleskin felt, which most rest companies will send you, QAD, that sort of stuff. I just have never been a fan of uh, any type of moleskin or felt, regardless of what company it comes from. I drastically prefer something stronger and longer lasting. And in this case, this is heat shrink tubing right from my local Lowe's. You can get it in an assortment pack, uh, which I get for random odds and ends, but this is basically 3 16 heat shrink tubing and 3 16 tubing will cover the arms perfectly of QAD HDXs or the integrates, or in this case, Hamsky launchers. This keeps it simple. It's very durable. It's very long lasting. And whenever it's done, all I got to do is cut it with a slit and uh, just peel it right off because there's no adhesive, it's just held on by friction. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, bolt this onto the bow. Now this is an Elite Cure, so it has two uh, bolt hole mount locations here, which makes it really nice to align this up nice and even and flush and straight. Hamski uses these huge 3 uh bolt heads. Let's see if I can actually fit both these on here, and I'll show you why I want to fit both these on here in a minute. So all rests pretty much nowadays come with a set screw of some sort. Uh, Ripcord's my favorite because it's a big, fat, actual grub screw. Like these little things, I feel like these little guys don't do much, if anything. Uh, but uh, as, a, uh, as a set screw, that's what it is. I don't like set screws. They really gum up and muck up your riser. My bows already get beat up enough as it is, so I actually just take this little uh, set screw out and I'll actually just uh, put him back in the box for later. And for those of you that don't know what I'm trying to do, I'm gonna try to get this little metal tab installed. And do we have enough room? Yes, we do. This little metal tab here is how I hang my bow in my uh, hiss strap when I saddle hunt. If you're interested in that, I will put a link in the description below. And that's not fully snugged on there, but it's on there enough. This quarter turn in here. Now I would really reef these down, but I don't want to reef them down just yet because I'm not sure this is the exact configuration that I'm going to do, but I want to uh, get my launcher arm installed, run my cord and tie my knot in, and then we're pretty much ready to go. We'll just uh, eyeball, uh, well actually we'll break out a T-square to check for center shot as well as knock height. 
All right, so this thankfully isn't rocket science down here with the rebound dampener instead of the spring. There's a short end of the cord and a long end of the cord. We're going to take the short end and we're going to tie it up around the limb pad. Now, I like to tie a slip style knot, meaning that it constricts onto itself uh, over time. If I can find the end of the cord, there we go. So I will tie and I will uh, include a link in the description below for the knot that I tie down here. Nothing fancy, but I like a constricting style knot because it allows me to loosen it up later. All right, so now we got that constricting knot tied up. I don't mind having a little tag in down here. There's nothing wrong with that. So I'll line it up in the middle of the grooves of that sticky limb pad down there. And since it's a constricting knot, I'll cinch it up on itself down here onto that limb pad. And like I said, I had already kind of figured out this uh, location based on uh, shooting hamskies of the past. So now we'll move you on up. We'll come back up here to the uh, octagon arm here. Now this is a great uh, place to stop and talk about tension. So this uh, launch arm currently is under a lot of tension. That's really good. If it was too much tension, which I haven't seen a hamski from the factory that had too much tension, you can take off this octagon arm. Here, I'll just do it here for the sake of footage. i do is loosen this up. It'll pop right off here. And here you have two screws. And these screws are holding in this plate right here. I'm not going to pop them off, but inside here, uh, every, uh, I think it's an eighth of a turn, there are two additional screws as you rotate this around. Inside the body here is that coil spring. So you have this rod which runs through one, two bearings, and then a coil spring in the center. And so what happens is when you pivot this in and out, it either adds or reduces tension to the launcher arm. So if you're running a really light arrow, let's say you're going outdoors, 3D, FIDA, that type of stuff, you could lower the tension on this launcher arm. It's really stiff right now. This would be great for uh, heavy arrows, or in my case, just regular arrows, or if you're gonna shoot something really heavy and fat for indoor, like a 2712, 2514. Uh, this is a really good tension for that, but if it was too much or too little, pop these screws out all the way, rotate this disc, and like I said, I think it's about every eighth of a turn, there are two holes here to re-insert uh, the screws, and you can uh, add tension or reduce tension. Adding tension is by going clockwise, uh, reducing tension is by going counterclockwise, at least as I see it here. So let's get my little octagon arm back on. Also as another point here, you can actually replace uh, the uh, octagon arm direction. So for example, you can uh, flip it around and have it get pulled this way. And that would allow you to attach to the top limb if you wanted to do so. But I'm going to attach the bottom limb, so I'm gonna leave it as it was stock from the factory. Run my cord through. And I will leave this cord actually really long. So the cure is only a uh, about a 31, 32 inch, 32 inch axle to axle bow. And so I'll actually leave this cord long because I don't know if I'm gonna put this onto my Victory later, which is 39 inches, my Result 38, uh, any of my, but my E35. So I will leave this cord long and that's okay because there's no metal football clamp in here. There's no real uh, added amount, huge amounts of weight. It'll just be rope on rope and uh, I can have an easy slippable knot, but also that won't add a whole bunch of weight. The rebound dampener down here is gonna pull it anyhow, and uh, I'll be in really good shape. So I'm gonna leave this long, and I'm gonna tie my Prusik. Again, I'll link that video in the description below. All right, so I got my knot tied in here on the other side, which makes this just a really simple process. If I need to add tension, there it is right there. The arm stays down, this stays down. It's gonna take time to break in that knot. I've discovered that a little bit, uh, shooting with the uh, other Prusiks that I'd set up, or Prusik style or Blake six style notch that I've set up. It takes a little break in time, a little stretch, but once it's set and it's ready to roll, uh, it doesn't have any movement. This is nice and firm already. Very pleased with that. One thing though that I've just now noticed when I've uh, come on this side of the bow is the launcher arm here sits very much over the shelf. Uh, now it's not touching the shelf and it won't touch the shelf because there's a very good positive stop here uh, in the primer's uh, body housing here. It's not gonna slap off the riser, uh, but this sticks way over the shelf, whereas, and that's just due to the location of the arm here, whereas the hybrid and the Trinity have much longer arms over here that attach to the bow. And this actually sits way back, way recessed of the shelf. It actually doesn't come anywhere near uh, when it's uh, fully down. So that'll be interesting. Uh, I might have to uh, just move this out and only put one screw in here in order to slide that whole thing back, but we'll see how it tunes first. Now the beauty again of this Prusik is I can just alleviate tension and this is why I love limb driving rest so much. I can just take a peek here and see my knock height here. I can see here based on my burger button location, I'm just a touch low, but I think I'm going to leave it 
and just uh, see how it shoots through paper to start. Also going to check uh, my center shot location. I have my uh, Easton T square here and I have a mark on it here for 13 16 from the riser on both sides. We'll use the silver side. So I'm just going to come right into the uh, burger buttonholes here. Man, we are we are just outside of 13 16. I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave everything exactly as it is. I'm going to put this down and we're going to shoot through paper and we're going to see how easy this rest tunes up for me. All right, welcome to the horrible lighting situation that is this side of the basement. Sitting here, uh, currently this spot here, I have a crack in my concrete floor that is eight feet away from my paper tuning stand here. So let's take our first shots. Well, that's pretty solid. Right now it is about a quarter inch knock left. So let's grab an Allen key and let's see if we can fix that. As a tip with most ham skis and a lot of limb driven rests in general, because the body is usually bigger and more robustly built, there is a clearance issue with a lot of cable guards and the interior workings. And so I actually have a, I think it's a four mil. Yeah, a four mil uh, Allen key that I actually cut down myself, made it into a grubby one. So that whole shank there is maybe about three eighths of an inch long and it fits right under the cable guard. No problems here on this cure. So it is knock left, which means we have to move the rest to the right, which means we were outside of center shot, which is exactly where we uh, were when we set that up earlier. So there are two witness marks here. I'm just moving this over just a tick, about a 16th of an inch, if not even a touch less. And our cord stretched a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of rebound here, which is totally normal. I expect that out of a limb driven rest, regardless of whether or not I have this uh, knot in here. So let's see here. We move that over. Let's see if we can't get a bullet hole. Knock height was basically dead on bang perfect. <laughs> I love shooting high quality equipment, building arrows that make sense, tuning equipment that makes sense. Let's go take a look at this. All right, we'll make no bones about it. There's shot one. You notice that we are a touch knock left. And of course we were outside of 13 16. So I put it basically probably at 13 16 and <sighs> it feels good. So now basically I'm just going to make sure all the bolts are tightened down on this rest and keep shooting it, get this cord stretched out. Considering I've only put two shots through it, it seems like it's gonna probably need a little bit more cord work. Other than that, uh, this sticking over here, over the shelf like this, uh, doesn't seem to be an issue whatsoever. Uh, in terms of the length of the arm, I thought I'd have a little bit of hand contact, and I don't, although I have a pretty low wrist grip. Uh, you can, of course, uh, take this and just run it as a one bolt and slide it all the way back and really get some uh, more shelf clearance there. You really get it further back, but I could not be more pleased. Eyeballed the knock height, 13, 16 dead nuts. I don't even have to touch the set technology. That goes to show you what a high quality rest will do. Building an arrow that's within the bell curve, that's a 480 grain uh, serious uh, Supernova 2.0 with 125 grain point. Uh, cut to 31 inches, 300 spine. It's a very bell curve arrow for me. It's right down the middle of basically every spec and uh, two shots and a bullet hole. No spine indexing, no knock tuning, no set technology. Just keep it simple, keep it robust seems to work. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions on setting up a limb driven rest, it doesn't have to be the Hamski primer. It can be another Hamski. It could be a vapor trail. It could be any other model that's out there. I'd be happy to help you out. Or if you just have any questions that pertain to the sport of archery and archery hunting, please average Jack archery on Facebook, Instagram, average Jack archery at gmail.com or drop a comment here on YouTube. So I hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting. If you so choose, definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation. I hope you're shooting bullet holes, and we'll get to see you next time.